I'm Darren L. Hammond with ZipMinis.com and I'm here today to present you the first in our series, Higher Education Explosion. And I know that you're going to enjoy it and the future episodes that we create. Uh, we are at ZipMinis.com and you're welcome to visit us there. Our mission is to analyze issues dealing with social media, education, cognitive science, and writing. You're welcome to use these videos for your own purposes and to share, and uh, we'd love to see you drop by our site. Thank you for being here today. So, Higher Education Explosion Series Part 1, an introduction to massive open online courses, or MOOCs. Education is so important in the world because it equals empowerment through knowledge, skills, which lead to opportunity. Education can free the world of hunger and poverty and all that ails it. So a MOOC is an effort to accomplish this by creating um, huge courses that allow open enrollment of students. These classes can have uh, 100,000 students, for example. They're created by outstanding university professors across the United States, and they can be taken by anyone. You don't need any special credentials. Um, you don't need a, a financial aid in most cases because they're almost entirely free. The um, problem with that is that you do not get credits that work your way towards a degree, but rather you get certifications of various sorts. Some of the key platforms, uh, number one is probably Coursera. It's probably the largest. Udacity and edX are both um, important players as well. Udacity becoming increasingly so as they have recently connected with several universities. Um, enrollments just at Coursera alone from 2012, um, the fall to present, are over 2 million. So these are massively popular. What I wanted to do here was to take you to Coursera because I have an account there and can show you a few things. And um, this is after, of course, you've already registered. You've got the tab there where you can look at all the categories. And this tab here, which you can search by university uh, which university you want to take a course from. Uh, look at the big names on there. Berkeley, um, and MIT, and some of the others. And these are by subject area. And um, you narrow it down to the closest topic area that you're interested in, and then search th through there. Or just simply jump into this search box here and type away. So for example, I'm really interested in cognitive science and I'm going to type that in and see what pulls up and we don't have an exact match but we do have basic behavioral neurology which is um, very uh, akin to cognitive science. And I've pulled up that course here. All I have to do if I want to take that is click that sign up button. Notice it's taught from Penn State. And it gives us the name of the instructor and a little bit about that person. So this is Roy Hamilton, a medical doctor. Certainly has the credentials to teach the course. Uh, there's an overview of the course so we can decide whether we want to sign up or not and then a little more extensive background 
on the instructor down here at the bottom uh, indicates that you get a cer certificate of uh, accomplishment after completing the course. So um, this just shows some of those universities, the big names. Coursera currently works with about 33 universities. And I'm pulling you into a course that I'm actually enrolled in right now, developing innovative ideas for new companies. And I'm clicking go to the course. And this is what a course looks like. It's made to look very basic. If you've taken any online courses, this probably looks somewhat familiar. On the left-hand margin here, you've got a menu of items which are key to navigating uh, our site. It's got the syllabus and lectures and different things like that. Over on the right-hand side, we've got upcoming deadlines for homework and quizzes, new lectures that have been posted, and these lectures are really well done, at least the ones I have observed. They've got slideshows with picture-in-picture -picture, um, video camera on the instructor. This one I'm taking is from University of Maryland, and uh, Dr. James V. Green teaches it and is just an excellent instructor. I've very, been very impressed with uh, the way the course has been laid out by him. And it's very easy to follow. It's made for the layperson to be able to do. Now I'm going to shift gears on you here and present my metaphor uh, for what I'm going to discuss about MOOCs. The fact is that MOOCs potentially represent free-for-all education. And notice the play on words there. An education free-for-all is a possibility as well. So we've got a, a sun here, a star, and within a star there is tremendous energy. And um, it, depending on the age of the star, that energy collapses on itself, the matter collapses on itself, and results in massive pent-up energy, which then violently erupts into a supernova. We might think of this, in terms of MOOCs, as disruption. So MOOCs present a major disruption in higher education traditional higher education. And we know, in uh, whether it's business or science, that disruption leads to chaos, more often than not. And um, here is an example of the chaos involved, and, and this is minimalized here, all of the different complexities of what makes higher education in our day. And notice, traditional universities are flipped on end, meaning not that they are obsolete, but that they um, are certainly taking on a new role and will have to adapt. A supernova can also be something of beauty, so it can be chaos. But it can be something beautiful, and I think the potential for that in higher education with MOOCs and this disruptive force, force, I think the potential is there for a type of beauty. And that beauty from it can emerge a design. And um, that design... Um, can have a, a backbone structure. You can see the ridges in there. You can see the central core. We're not sure at this point in higher education what are going to make up those major ridges and the core. I would suggest that traditional universities are still going to be a part of that. And in fact, probably the most important players 
and they're not going to be eliminated, but they are certainly going to change on a very fundamental level. They will change in pay structure, um, in uh, how classes are delivered, in how students attend classes, in connecting with other universities and other corporate organizations that fund them. And this is going to lead to a completely different system. And there are going to be many who are entrenched in that traditional system who will be upset by the chaos of it. I believe that within this chaos, there is the potential to educate the masses of people on the earth today that could greatly benefit, that could better their lives through education. And that is my contention and what we'll follow up with in our next segment. So watch for part two, higher education explosion. And um, in part two, we will explore the specific positive force of MOOC education, empowering the people. And that was just um, kind of a side note today. Today was just an overview, but thank you for being here. Continue to watch, subscribe to our channel, and visit our website, zipminis.com. Thank you.